So our story begins with uh, Larry stopping a raging bull elephant with this rock. At about four o'clock in the afternoon, out of nowhere, this elephant went from naught to 42 kilometers an hour, straight for us. It started screaming when it first saw us and it never stopped. And I knew at a point in time, I was history. There was no cover, there was nowhere to go, there was no cliff or anything like that. I remember standing there and watching Larry as he faced this raging bull elephant. And I remember thinking that he was, he was definitely dead. The thought that went through my mind was, how do I recover his body? And how do I tell Ben? I shouted to Sai, I said, grab a rock. And then I looked and I saw two rocks picked one up. Larry, who's an artist, and couldn't throw this rock on any day to hit this tree, hit the elephant square on the temple. The dust from the, that he'd been scattering all over his head covered his eyes and he, he stopped like this. And we ran, we kept running to the railway line. You know, a guy had been killed the week before under very similar conditions where he had been chased down over 400 meters. The autopsy um, from these elephants, when, when they have been going into these frenzies, when they've shot the elephant, they found their, their stomachs are full of plastic. We all got together and we're like, well, let's try. Plastic is is a major problem, um, especially in Big Falls here, um, where your plastic management has, has not really been as good as it should be. Um, we're picking up all sorts of things in these elephants' guts, from pieces of glass to batteries. You imagine what a ba burst battery d does in the gut. Any animal that has uh, an infection or is compromised in any way, you get a direct increase in, in aggression. If you think about it, I mean, the, the amount of chemicals and toxic waste that the, these guys are ingesting, there's got to be some sort of direct effect on the health of that elephant, uh, making it sick, making it more aggressive, possibly. There's a new concept that people have picked up globally, and they call it plastosis. And it's basically from plastic particles that are, are, are causing a toxicity within the, the body. Um, and over time, these animals will, will actually die. All the waste within Victoria Falls, either coming from the households, coming from these holes, coming from the hotels, tower barrages, or William, it's coming from, it's all buried by kinds of trucks and it's taken to be rubbish out. And there, it just stays there, it's just the controls. Uh, place in terms of waste, but nothing happens to the waste. So the need of this um, kind of initiative is unquestionable and something that cannot even be out and about. It's um, everyone's desire, every tourist, um, the tourism players desire to ensure that we deal with plastic wild and for all. We all share a love and passion for Vic Falls because we live here and, and this is our home. I've been thinking about recycling for a long time because I've seen the dump burning many times. You see the plastic and the elephant dump all the time around town. So it's very evident that there's a, a major plastic problem. I've always wanted to make plastic bricks. That was the original idea. From there, we came across plastic recycled aggregate for concrete, which is an absolute game changer. So we're going to be turning all of this into that. Uh, recycled lightweight aggregate for concrete. We're going to use it in everything from the concrete under our feet to the, the mortar between these bricks. 
that actually improves the properties of concrete. It makes it more flexible because this is kind of soft and spongy, so it gives concrete the room to expand and contract. The beauty with this process is that we don't even need to clean the, the plastic. We can collect the dirty off the street as it is, with a bit of food waste covered in dirt, a little bit of mud in it. It doesn't matter. The process accepts about 10% of, of our contaminants. Well, not just want to, we need to remove all of the plastic. It's a necessity. I grew up in Victoria Falls. Simon, myself, Raina, we disappear into this bush all the time. It revives me in a way that I can't explain. It's been very, very hard for me to watch through my short lifetime, the poisoning of this destination, the poisoning of the wilderness that's, that's brought me most of my happiest memories. We've found a recycling solution, but the issue is so much deeper than that. It's, it's so rooted in the social aspect. We struggled with working out how to, how to motivate people to one, to not litter, but two, to go and clean up all of this trash that we've created in, in these decades. We can attach a value to plastic. We can pay people per kg. And if they are to collect all day, we can at very least double their minimum wage earnings. We can create a self-motivated, widespread community cleanup that can draw plastic out of these areas and bring, bring income to the people that need it the most. Our great dream is to clean up the entire Kaza region. Um, Kaza is a series of national parks through Southern Africa and when grouped together, they're actually the largest area of wildlife in the world. We need help. This is a big problem. And a big problem needs a big group of people. So please, please, in any way you can, give Ellie Collection support. We won't let you down. <laughs>